Hello. Hello. அங்கே சிஎம்சி சதீஷ் நம்பர் இருக்கா
என் சதீஸ் சாரி என் சதீஸ் இல்லை நியூ சதீஸ் இருக்கு அப்படி இல்லை என்எஸ்கே இல்லை நியூஸ் இருக்கு ம் போட்டு <laughs> எதுக்கு வீட்டுக்கு போற நேரத்துக்கு நீ பெரிய ஆளா ஆகிட்ட மாதிரி வீட்டுக்கு போக முடியாது இதே வாங்க
Elian, can you hear? Hello? 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 Yeah, we will we'll start, please. Hello, Kalyan, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? 
Uh, uh, hope you can uh, see me and uh, listen to me. Hello. Just fine, one minute. So good evening to all of you and uh, sorry for the uh, five minutes delay. There was some network uh, issue. Thank you for being with me for some time and from your uh, busy training of uh, academics. I hope you are settled with your uh, first year classes. Recently you would have completed your uh, first continuous assessment. So in between, I just thought of sharing with you some of the characteristics of education in higher education institutions. One significant characteristic of today's education in professional system is the Washington Accord, which is based on outcome based education. And you will be seeing words like NBA, National Board of Accreditation, accredited programs, when you selected your institution, you would have selected the accredited programs. So these are all based on outcome-based education, which is an old concept, not new. And you have learned your basis or the plus two or the previous courses under outcome-based only. Today it has become more conscious. So in books, they write it outcome based education or a learning outcome, course objective, course outcome. Such words are being explicitly printed. The large population and uh, economy growing, we need to educate a large number of uh, people. So there is a standard. So all over the world, the standards have evolved. Like any other standard, software standard, standard for a TV, standard for uh, cars, standard for uh, uh, home appliances, everything got a standard. So education is also getting standardized. That is for the upward mobility of students. They can travel abroad, they can get admission in a big university in a foreign land. So there should be some benchmarking about institutions in the world. So every institution is benchmarked. So one characteristic is NBA accreditation in India. And the underlying principle is this Washington Accord, which takes care of mobility of credits, mobility of knowledge, mobility of people who seek knowledge in the world. So one characteristic is going through outcome based mode of learning. So my purpose of talking to you is to make you aware of what you are doing. This is not new. You are already doing it. But just to give you uh, 
a, a, some hint about the process that you are undergoing in the campus. So as the uh, PPT is visible, this outcome, it is not result. In English, you can say they are equivalent, but outcome is before beyond result. When you write the exam, you have a result. You cleared or not cleared or uh, whatever. But outcomes are different. After this exam, what happens? That is the meaning of outcome. You may say, I will go to the next semester. That is also not outcome. It is natural. But after the exam, I go to a big achievement at the national level or go for a higher uh, job. These things could be taken as outcome. So after doing something, you have to define something beyond that. So the when you define outcome, it is based on performance. Performance, it is not on the task. So there is a performer. You are the performer, not the teacher. Teacher will train you how to perform. For example, if you learn classical dance or music or whatever, you will be trained by your teacher and you perform on the stage in front of a big audience and you get a big applause. They give you some honor. These are all outcomes of that performance. So how you perform will decide the outcome. Please remember this in mind. So the requirement is there must be something performable, means there is a particular level of activity defined. It is not the activity, it is a level to perform. And there should be an accessible uh, tool for this. And it should be demonstrated in front of the society, I mean the knowledgeable group of that particular domain. They decide about the performance. So focus is on the performance, not on the activity or task to be performed. So generally, everybody will give the, get the same task, but the level of performance will be different. Like people write the same exam, each one performs differently, which is reflected by the marks or grade or whatever you say. So the, I uh, hope this slide is moving and the next slide is about a small uh, event all of us went through, some of us must have gone through. What is the best age to learn swimming? Some of you will be knowing swimming, some of you may be learning, some of you will be trying to learn. But basically these are all lessons to overcome hurdles. You can read the literature about swimming. You can see the photo, a, a small baby is taken with her, its mother standing in water and there is a coach trying to create interest or make some happiness in the child about water, nothing beyond that. Then slowly when it grows, now they are able to stand in water again with happiness, no fear. There's another coach uh, exposing them to the water body and it grows. The same thing would have happened to you in your day-to-day uh, -day life. Would have gone to LKG, UKG, somebody would have taken you to the classroom. Teachers have trained you, but we would have forgotten how we got accustomed to the classroom atmosphere, the learning atmosphere. Now you have reached PSG. So you just retrace your journey, how you started from school, how you reached an engineering uh, profession. I mean towards engineering profession. So there will be series of activities that has happened. Each stage is an outcome. 11th standard, 12th standard, 10th standard, you can go back. Every outcome has put you into the next level of performance. Some of them may write national level exam, KVPY or uh, Olympiads. You get that type of recognition. So uh, outcomes are different. They are defined differently. Look at the third photograph. This is about driving. Driving in reality, it looks so horrible. You may get scared after seeing the crowd, but we travel in bus, we travel in car or bike or whatever. But when you take a license from the license issuing authority, you cannot drive next day in the road. Definitely you'll be scared of driving. Then either your coach or your parent or some person who is confident of driving will take you through some safe route, slowly build confidence in you and one day you can maneuver through this crowd. 
So taking a license does not give you confidence in going through a crowd. So that's what I mean by the word outcome. You have to perform in a real world situation. You drive well, you have attained outcome. You travel with a given speed, reach your target without any issue in time, on time, then it is an outcome. So outcomes are defined with real world situation. That is the difference. Whereas examination or getting Mars grade, etc., they are defined within. But when you expand your knowledge to a real world situation, their performance is measured. So after learning, an interview committee comes, they measure your learning, then outcomes are defined. You are selected for a high profile profession. Performance is good. You will say, yes, outcomes are achieved. So like this, you please try to connect your learning with the real world situation. Then you can appreciate the meaning of outcome and what is meant by outcome based education. So when you wrote your first CA, I am trying to connect with the classroom. There could be a few questions which are practiced in the class and you try to answer them and you will be getting your marks. I will come to the difference between marks and grades maybe after a few slides. So learning swimming in a well-defined well environment like a swimming pool, that courage what you get, it is with you. You may not swim sometime, but when you see a real life situation to save somebody's life in another pool or in a river, whatever is with your level of confidence, you will not hesitate to jump into water and save him. So this is outcome. So from known, you go to unknown. So that is the meaning of outcome. You are taught some concepts in the class, but teacher puts a question which is slightly stretched. It needs some more thinking, some more uh, effort from you, then outcomes can be measured. This is what happens in the real world. All of us have the degree, but when you go to the outside world, we have to have confidence to meet the situation and serve the community wherever we live, medical or uh, engineering or uh, science or whatever it is. So please remember this particular uh, definition of outcome. Outcomes are generally external. It is not available with internal measurement. I am sure some of you will be watching TV in various channels, some snapshots. First one is from ABC, even now it is going on, I think end of December it may stop and another version will start. So you can listen to the conversation between the anchor and the people who participate. They spend several years to get into the audition and come to the selection then in the first 10 then getting a chance to sit in front of uh, Sri Amitabh Bachchan whether they score jackpot or prize money that is immaterial they want to be visible in TV in front of the great actor well-known person Sri Amitabh Bachchan so it is an outcome for them a significant outcome the next slide it is from Master Chef uh, Australia this is more realistic because the practice already you have a talent in cooking and then they have to stay in the particular uh, location and everything is from scratch you have to select your uh, vegetable or meat or whatever you have to cut you have to prepare nobody is there to help except a few machines then within the time you have to prepare the dish and serve it properly with manners and get an applause from the judge I think sometime you have to serve to customers also. So it is a complete real world situation. And you get the Master Chef title and the subsequent achievements on that awards or prize or contract for working, all those things will be there. So these are all something very serious, high impact outcomes. Next is from, uh, you can guess, it is from the Indian Idol. There you can see the rigor. You have to sing alone, you have to sing in group, you have to stay in a particular venue. There will be a lot of training. Each person competes, but at the same time, they appear to be friendly. So this is the world. So this is another type of outcome, emotionally adjusting, learning, the fundamentals, performing well, no stage fear. It takes you through a very big 
series of journeys. Last one is from the Shark Tank. You will be seeing in TV. Shark Tank US was there. Shark Tank India is there. So one company is winning the contract. Uh, I mean the financial support from one of the members. It is Piyush Bansal, the Lenskart founder. And the people who receive this particular uh, uh, prize or that uh, funding, they have made a glucometer which will not prick the patient, painless uh, glucometer. So it's something highly technical. Started with a very low uh, investment, then made it more uh, uh, visible. Then the committee selected for funding this team. So this few photographs or the these slides talk about the outcomes which are very significant. Significant means it needs hard work, very hard work. Not like passing an exam or getting a job. You compete with the best in the world or in the nation. Then you come out with well-defined performance metrics uh, satisfied. Now a little bit of uh, description, understanding outcome in an academic context. So the general definition you should know on successful completion of a particular program, I have not filled anything. The graduates will be able to, when you say outcome, they must be able to do something, to, to walk fast, if, to run fast if you are an athlete, or if you do a high jump, or if you previous slides you have seen to cook a particular dish in a given time. These are all some outcomes if you undergo a particular course. So in some case, suppose you undergo a research program, research related MS research or PhD, then generally they must be able to do evaluating the research designs, methods and come to conclusions. Then suppose you do some self assessment courses like a management course on psychology or behavioral science. They teach you something beyond uh, on recruitment. You know certain things, HR practices. So there should be a self-assessment and able to adjust your future performance in their self-assessments. Then communication related, you will be able to communicate formally and informally through speaking, writing and listening. Listening is another, another way of powerful communication. So it depends upon your program. For example, in engineering, let us say civil engineering, if you see, there will be outcomes related to your program. Civil engineering graduate at the end of four years, he will be able to evaluate designs. He should be able to put an estimate. He should be able to give a time frame for completion of the project at a higher level. Uh, huge structures like airport or, uh, or ships, or a huge bus stand, public facilities, you should be able to design earthquake resistant buildings. So like that, you can define your outcome. So there is a word called graduate attribute defined by Washington under Washington Accord. You can read all this when you have time, but it will be enriching your knowledge what you gain in the campus. So outcomes are achieved by effort. You have seen previous few slides by continuous practice and perseverance. Outcomes will not happen by chance. Please remember this, by reading about outcome, by listening to outcome description, nothing will happen. You have to practice continuously. You have to put your effort. You must have a pain that I did not do it well. So next time you have to do well. That is the meaning of this perseverance. Continuously chase it. Then you will achieve the outcome. So please remember this, that uh, driving photograph, swimming photograph, then the ABC achievers, the master chef achiever, Indian Idol, and the last one. All these that uh, startup, I mean Shark Tank India, all these are by continuous effort. When you start a company, it will be very difficult to start. You may fail, again you have to get funds, again make your product successful. It's very hard. So the concepts are what I discussed so far. One is program outcome. Related to this, you may define a course outcome. If you learn calculus or physics or some course, you will have the related course outcome. And so many courses will attribute to a given program outcome, which your department will definitely teach you. I am just giving an outline, not getting into the course outcome. NBA means National Board of 
accreditation, Washington Accord. There are several countries who signed the Washington Accord. Under that, this accreditation procedure is applied. We are also, India is a member of Washington Accord. So they put stringent conditions. That is why the programs, what you have taken in PhD Tech, they will also put you to a high pedestal because of the rigor here from beginning, not because of accreditation alone. Since inception 1951, PhD got its own rigor. Now they are all well structured because of accreditation. So when you learn in an institution, the traditional values, traditional way of learning and the new framework, so you can compare all this and hence the outcomes that you are going to achieve. Then graduate attributes. That's what I read in the beginning. A graduate of this program will be able to effectively communicate, effectively analyze, effectively demonstrate, effectively articulate. These are all graduate attributes. Attributes. So mechanical engineering attribute is different from metallurgical engineering attribute that is different from computer science attribute, different from textile related attributes. So this is something unique to that program. Like you say plus two, you take mathematics and biology, you will achieve some specific skills. Whereas a student who takes up uh, commerce, his abilities will be different. But attribute is different from ability. Ability is inherent. Attribute is something which you acquire after some time. You get training in a particular uh, field, you acquire those attributes. So you can see the some of the Olympics people who are interested in sports, you will appreciate it. This is about high jump. All of us would have done some time in schools. You jump over a bar. If you attend SSB interview, you will have similar exercise. So you jump from where you stand, you can jump, you can run and jump to increase your momentum and go up. So all these were done. Many people did many things, but in 1968, I, I think I'm right, the Summer Olympics in Mexico, Mexico City, there was a new way of uh, uh, doing high jump. That was a record breaking event. It is by Dick Fosbury. So this is called the Fosbury flop. Because he attempted several times as a trainee. He did his own way of learning. Basically, he's a civil engineer from student from Portland. And he did a lot of mechanics. I mean, the rigid body dynamics, center of gravity. So you can see the difference in this photograph. If it is clearly visible to you, he faces the sky and falls on his back on the mat after jumping. So this gives a higher level of efficiency to lift the center of gravity above the bar. Whereas in other pictures, you can see you are facing Earth. So there is a significant gain in lifting the center of gravity above the bar. And that gives you a better level, a higher level of performance, like bicycle kick in football. These are all some unique styles developed over a period of time. Uh, so that uniqueness is an outcome. So he practiced several times. There are videos in the uh, internet. You can see what is Fosbury flop. Everybody will run and jump in the same way. But in this case, the body is given a spin. Then direction is changed. Then this last phase happens. It was a great uh, record breaking event in uh, athletics. So uh, you can see the trajectory in the uh, side photograph, right? So I stop with that part of uh, figures, then a little bit on understanding what is meant by when you compete, generally that is what happens. In, try to be unique, doing something unique that cannot be replicated. Nobody can copy that. One is competing to be the best, the other one is competing to be unique. I think that green part is more important, you should be unique. You not compete for the best. From there, you should go to uniqueness, level of uniqueness. So when we compete, generally what happens is we compete on the same dimension. If somebody is doing something well, we try to imitate. That need not be according to your skill. You can try to be unique. Various examples are there for this financial companies. Uh, FMCG, fast moving consumer good industries. So they have a strategy how to position yourself in a unique manner in the market. That is their success. 
if you read about Aiki, the Swedish furnished, uh, furniture company, they have a concept of modular furniture. You read about that. So each organization, when they excel, the Fortune 500 or whatever name you read in Forbes magazine, so they work on some unique characteristics of their tradition. Each company will have a value system. They try to be unique. And how they maintain this uniqueness with time, that is the leadership. So you learn how to be unique in your profession in the coming years, in your professional life. That will be the success story for you. Little bit of academic context because you deal with mathematics. I have taken some lessons from that. Suppose you have a course in mathematics first day. Anyway, you are engineering graduates. Suppose you are a BSc mathematics graduate. There could be a course on welcome mathematics. It is not for exam. It is an introductory course just to welcome the graduates for the department. So there won't be any exam like same day or afternoon or next day. So they will speak about mathematics for a few hours, like your uh, universal human values or induction program. So the outcome of such a program will be, you must be able to describe several areas of mathematics beyond calculus, maybe linear algebra or matrix, vectors and uh, trigonometry, analytic geometry, something you should be able to explain, number theory. Then recognize the members of max department. If you belong to a department, you must know everybody, including the office assistant to the of the department or the director or whatever then you must be able to express your interest in mathematics why you have taken up mathematics as your field of study why some new knowledge or work you have done in your previous education then write something precisely about mathematics what is the importance of mathematics or how it influenced you something should be written you say statement of purpose so if you learn mathematics in a generic way this is how it will be could be same for physics, chemistry, biology, or if you selected computer science or uh, IT, you can always think of this, why I took this. Now coming to a little complex, slightly advanced in calculus, which you will be undergoing now, you must know how to solve linear systems, systems of linear equations, because you deal with operators, del phi a, del dot phi a, all that. You must be able to write a matrix so linear systems will come because you may get differential equations to solve then limits and continuity definitely these are all part of calculus definite and indefinite integrals you must be able to compute to integrate then algebraic logarithmic and exponential functions you should be in a position to differentiate or integrate it's only an introductory level thing you may not formulate the problem then analyze functions and their graphs for example, you have MATLAB, you can put the function, you can draw the graph, you can find out where it is not continuous. If it is not continuous, there are other implications you can find a derivative. First derivative, second derivative, maxima, minima, a lot of things will come out of graph. Then solve applied problems using matrices, differentiations and integration. I mentioned about that already. You may need eigenvalues, eigenvectors. So it gets into a different domain that time. But when you learn calculus, you will learn something connected. Uh, unfortunately, font size is slightly small. Uh, please uh, bear with me. I couldn't type it uh, again. So this is again, you do a, a problem solving and C programming. I'm just looking at how to solve a mathematical problem or mathematically solve a problem. Let me put that way. So when you solve a problem mathematically, one is by hand, you drive, uh, you write it in paper, then unknown three equations, three variables, but you may get into a complex thing, more number of variables, more equations. So it cannot be done by a manual procedure. And we should be modern. We like we change our lifestyle. We use the best cell phone, best computer, best laptop. You should solve the problem also in the best way. So therefore you have to use programming, C or whatever language you are familiar with, then plotting of graphs. Write a code as per standards. You should not write a code arbitrarily for which you are trained in the class. So there are standard procedures, standard subroutines. Uh, you can test your uh, proficiency in coding by the time you take to complete a particular computation or uh, calculation. So there are good benchmarking tools today. It's not like earlier days we used to write uh, so many lines 
to make a small uh, computation, but today you need not do that and verify the correctness of a solution or decide whether the result is an acceptable approximation to the solution. But these are little complicated, not like solving x plus y is equal to something and x minus y is another number. You see, very quickly you can calculate. That is not possible when you deal with a bigger statement of problem. So these problems could be like a swiggy you order from uh, in your mobile and it reaches you. So the time taken, they say it will come in 30 minutes or 20 minutes. How this is computed? This is like with a particular software or program embedded in the server, looking at the GP position of the ordering person and the location from which it is sourced, then the shortest route and the optimizing the supply chain. The person who delivers, he may have one or two items again to be supplied then it becomes economical otherwise you cannot get it at the same rate so this is a classic example of programming and mathematical problem solving like that there are many such puzzles you read some books on mathematical puzzles you are programming i mean problem solving abilities will improve coding club definitely will be doing it still complicated some of you in computer science will be dealing with this in your uh, upcoming years machine learning, many departments do that, but it deals with probability statistics, which you did in your plus two, you may be doing a little more stochastic processes on that. So the mathematical principles you should learn behind the statistical and algorithmic modeling, every branch may not do this, but you are free to learn this today. In the internet, the courses are offered under machine learning, any student can learn. So they are all very interesting fields of uh, mathematics and statistics it doesn't stop anybody from learning you are free to do all this tossing a coin is the simplest experiment you learn but it has a large implication and it leads to uh, significant outcomes regression curve fitting i think all this you will learn with time and then build high performance predictive models for any engineering it is required civil engineering mechanical engineering engineering, metallurgical engineering, everywhere this type of large system problem solving will be there. You have thousands of variables, dynamic systems. When you design a bridge, then you will come to know how complex it will be. You will design a tall building, it will be. When you design a combustion chamber, energy systems, you will come across such high performance computing requirements. And today design is not deterministic. They are all probabilistic. You have to give a reliability of a particular system. A car, engine, it will function for so many hours without maintenance requirement. Mobile phone, it will work for so many hours. So everything is predicted already and you have so many predictive models based on which products are designed. Then data science, computational skills, R, Python, I, I need not discuss on this. You will be knowing more than I know. Research a topic of interest with real world data, implement statistical and machine learning models, write up a report and present the results. So, when you read this paper, you will come to know one word called NSO, National Statistical Office, a government of India office. There they deal with gigabytes of data about the nation, individuals, weather, grains availability, price, inflation, whatever you want, you can. Imagine in the database, they need a large number of people to understand the data and engineers are the best choice. Once you know the data, you can analyze it, you can interpret for a given context and design tools or services for solving that type of problems. Then some cases you can give independent study on any topic, any topic. It could be physics, it could be English, it could be any language you like or any arts you like. Engage in the study or research of a topic that is beyond the classroom offering, but you must come out with something new. Only a few people will be interested in that and only a few will be able to evaluate it, which is beyond your exam models. They expect something unique to be found, a new, totally a path-breaking finding. I'm just presenting it so that there are avenues open to everybody. Nothing is an end. You can always continue and produce a document, maybe an international paper or a thesis or a book, whatever you like, that exhibit both the background and the conclusions reached as a result of such study. 
But these are all little high risk process. It's like a PhD, you can say. You take up a problem which nobody has taken up. Then you keep traveling and finally you find there is no scope. You come back. Again, you traverse in another direction. Then you get something interesting. So that time you become confident. Then critical review and research. This is from a biological phenomena, which today when there is a pandemic or any vaccine development, it, it continuously works. Finally, everything goes to the healthcare. That's what you read the newspaper. Any time you will find on health. People are doing research on the GECO. GECO is the lizard what you see in the house. It, it has a specific property. It's a tail. It will shed, but it grows. How it grows, that mechanism they are trying to understand because the spinal cord damage can be repaired by the same technique in human beings. So I think this research is happening in Canada. You try to learn more about it. So there will be computational modeling, experiments, studies on biology. Anybody can take up all this. Today there is no barrier. Then develop and lay the foundation to the solution of a problem in biomathematics, if it is bioinformatics. So many things are there today. Uh, you need uh, multiple domains interacting. Physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, uh, chemistry. They decide many things in healthcare today. Then, of course, engineers dealing with electronics, drug delivery systems, uh, whatever you want. In addition, this type of courses will prepare you to submit a proposal. So when you do a PhD or a higher study, they expect you to procure your own grant. So this is something like a startup. You do something, you feel there is a scope, then you put a proposal to a funding agency or a company. They find interest in that and they support you, either government or private. Now coming to curriculum, this is what uh, this final thing in your classroom, this is what happens. You read the definition of curriculum. Curriculum uh, from Latin, it means it is a set of activities and associated experiences. Please read carefully. There is an activity and there is an associated experience. Activity alone will not be sufficient. You need experience. Experience alone will not be sufficient. Then it is not curriculum. So a structured in a structured manner, you have to be given an activity and you must be allowed to reflect on the experience that you have got. Then only it is curriculum. To, tra to transform a student in this manner from a junior level to a senior level to work in a professional community and to live in an advanced society. That is the meaning of curriculum. So please read the definition of curriculum well, the way you understand that is very important for you to go forward. So if you look at this diagram, the center is outcome. Some significant outcome you have to exhibit. Now how this can be done? So you have to give so many inputs like the child learning swimming first it should be introduced to water what is water how it feels how, how it how it affects you when you pour water you become you get wet but when you stand in water what happens when you float in water what happens to float how many things you have to do by flapping your legs or hands how to float so these are all the concepts and somebody has to work for you to get it experienced, then watch how you perform. Then allow you to exhibit your ability, what activities, products, allow students to show that uh, coach that they have learned it. So that is assessment. What we do is assessment. So please understand this as a nutshell. For every program, there is an outcome. These outcomes are arrived at by careful, training by giving you concepts by making you practice then measuring how much you have learned and how far you are able to perform so when we assess how do you know if students work is good the good you define 60 percent 70 percent if you give a point or mark you have to accept some norm and go as per that even without mark you can assess somebody's ability Traditional learning, like in village, there may not be a mark, but people certify them with the highest level of achievement. See, earlier days, people learned this classical music or uh, Bharatanatyam or whatever. There is no such mark, but they are the world famous people 
which people used to learn the way they have learned they train others today it may be a university like certification of course there will be marks and other grades this slide is very important please try to understand the importance of i used this word in the last meeting with you that is the formative and uh, summative assessments as the word formative it is in the forming stage it grows it is developing all these ways you can describe it then summative it is the sigma total like integration integrated as a whole what you get assessment is to know how much you are able to perform the level of performance we call it as continuous assessment final exam all that so there is a teaching learning process classroom you have a teaching if you look at the left uh, part of this diagram there is a feedback when you take a attend a class you can give your uh, suggestions or you can ask questions these are all feedback this effectiveness of learning you may ask to repeat something or you may ask a doubt or you may say I, I could not understand these are all the feedback the characteristics of formative assessment is to capture these things then basically it measures adequacy of learning adequacy of learning methodologies and practices are you learning in the right way are you practicing sufficiently all these can be captured by the formative assessment it could be a small test in the class not for marks teacher gives a surprise test and he goes through he or she goes through the answers it will give a picture of students standing in the class day to day how they learn so formative is of a small duration low stake stake means risk you don't get a large mark 100 marks will not be given for this maybe 20 marks 30 marks and the final is reduced to some more level and total is 40 final exam may be 60. so please understand the characteristic of your internal assessment what we call it as continuous assessment it is a short duration process you have a mcq or you have an assignment or you have some tutorial you have practices you have a laboratory class on the top of that you have ca1 ca2 ca3 best two will be considered and if a student is missing both one more chance will be given that is how it will be done so the formative assessment is very important not in terms of marks of course it will influence your grade at the end but this gives a feedback to the teacher or to yourself about your own way of learning you are learning independently that is fine but are you aligned with the scientific way of learning that is more important so this when you conduct a ca it is a feedback you may directly tell the teacher about the difficulty you face that is another feedback all these are possible only through the formative assessment process in examination hall you cannot stand up and clarify your doubt that place is totally different but in the regular classroom you can always do this so formative assessment after the assessment you can practice your question paper again you can rewrite your answer script show to the teacher so it gives you a lot of freedom to learn or to relearn to refresh to refine to upgrade so many things are possible in the formative part it is meant only for that formative assessment is given a less risk i mean less mark and a small duration wherein you have you have enough chance to repeat you have three cas or two cas and you need not wait for one ca the ca again you can practice nobody stops you from that because now you read the right side so if you look at the assessment i have put a thin arrow on the side i have put a thick arrow and my faculty helped me to capture my concept i thank him for that the formative part is over now now come to the summative part summative is total what you learned purpose of this is to assess you have you learned sufficiently not the method method is over now now have you learned sufficiently to the level expected by the process by the program by the outcome measurement so this will be three three hours of duration it has a risk in the sense if you are absent for that it is a problem and this decides 
anyway there is no other way in our uh, india our uh, whole uh, university system final exams are given weightage uh, in foreign universities it may be different in iits it may be different but in a university system final exam fe component it is very important you have to score some specific level in the final exam so it has a risk in that aspect and the duration is 3 hours so this 3 hours exam is actually training you for something else to sit down to get disciplined to focus on a problem and try all your learning and you solve something unknown that is the meaning of this high stake there will be questions which are direct but there could be some questions which will stretch your imagination and stretch your effort but you feel happy when you solve such a problem that is the meaning of summative process and this will decide your ability to move upward but in our system there is no such thing you always go to the next semester unless you score a poor attendance in many subjects your attendance is very poor you will not go to the next semester you have to break you may go back so please understand the importance of formative assessment in terms of learning in terms of feedback in terms of improving and participation in the class participation means attendance attending all the classes maintaining attendance 75% or 100% it is always 100% then only this assessment becomes effective and this will help you perform well in the final exam i mean in the summative assessment so please understand the role of internal assessment we call it as continuous assessment but the right terminology is formative assessment and summative is the final exam which is conducted at the semester end you when you come in the maybe february or march it may happen to you so prepare well i am giving a clue to you the role of formative assessment role of summative assessment it is not questions repeat or anything it is not like a blue a blueprint you, you your mind get oriented towards a way of assessment so in the regular classes you have discussion in the class participate well don't cut the class keep good attendance give the feedback to the teacher get the feedback from the teacher in terms of corrected booklets answer booklet keep it safe don't spoil it or discard it it's a valuable input to you for your final exam and keep practicing from your internal question papers previous question papers so this formative will give you all such inputs so this diagram i feel very important for you to understand now comes to the end of the talk almost your performance when you perform you have to be rated so you have to be given marks and you have to be given a grade you know you start with o oh, a plus a b plus b all these things your tutor and teachers will tell you if not please read the book syllabus regulation book available in the website you can understand you ask the teachers hods get clarified all the time never get a doubt and anybody will help you here so one is the left side diagram it is a very like a jogging early morning walk or something very comfortable uh, you have to go 2 kilometers or 3 kilometers without any great constraint road is very good a plus and ambience everybody is known to you there is nothing and no pressure so maximum people will complete it that is the meaning we would expect good candidates to have completed most of the task everything is smooth you wear a nice shoe road is good clean no other issues no disturbances all that so good candidates would have completed most of the task i mean if 2 km maximum 95% would have completed it but you look at the right diagram we would expect good candidates to have only completed most of the task everybody cannot do that completed most of the task so in one side maximum people can do one who are really good they can only do this others cannot do that because you see the terrain very uneven rock stone it may be cold also with all these conditions they are able to trek or climb how many are able to do that decides the performance at that context in that context so it is not just how far you walked but also where you are walking so this talks about the stake the previous diagrams what i have uh, the photographs i showed you about in the middle or uh, kbc or uh, other events or sir chef 
shark tank so that, that they represent a very harsh reality whereas you perform within your own known circles it may not be difficult for you many people can achieve but when we are thrown open to the reality we may not be able to perform the way we were performing earlier so coming to the marks and grades please understand the difference marks represent how much of the task a candidate has completed 90% i answered 100% i answered you get 100 out of 100 true in a normal situation a grade takes into account how difficult the task is to provide the indication of how impressed we should be by the candidate's mark so this talks about the relative performance when you write a competitive exam like je or neat or a cat gate which you will come to know after some time second year third year people will talk about cat upsc exams many such exams gre toefl lot of things are there so there it is difficult there it is how you perform the impression you make on the evaluation system they say 98 percentile 100 percentile so many things come up so one is mark one is grade and there is a normal distribution which uh, slowly you will understand is a relative performance of uh, a particular group under given conditions i think some of you would have done the mathematical ability test max olympiad science olympiad i don't know but some of you would have participated you would have seen the difference in questions how they are different from a regular continuous assessment test so to summarize what i wish to say is is a list of references you can read a lot of books are available on pedagogy and uh, evaluation you should read all this it will be good so when you go through a process you will know why all these are in the world why there is assessment why there is formative assessment why there is continuous uh, final exam what is the need to be employed why we are in the professional community what is the role we have to play in the economic development of the nation or for the world all this will be clear when you read more I am sure you are doing that. Uh, please go through. So to summarize, I will put this way. Your role as a student in whatever branch you have taken or whatever you want to pursue is to demonstrate significant achievement of major outcomes. It is not marks. It is something significant outcome. It could be higher study. It could be placement. Or at the end of first year, I will do this internship. Or second year, I will do this. For which you have to practice. You have to have enough patience, and the classroom is the place for this. Participate well in the classes. Don't miss your class because every class will be unique. There will be something new, uh, except in some unavoidable situation due to personal emergency or not well. There are systems to take care of that, but habitually don't miss the class. Keep a good attendance. Interact with the teachers. Very very important. Read from the library. And you have good media today. I'm not talking about social media. I'm talking about TV. The UGC channels are there. So, Prabha. A lot of things are there where you can listen to teachers in various aspects of learning. You not be engineering alone. You can learn what you were doing in schools once. Some of you may be good painters. Some of them may be good artists or tailoring. A lot of things have come up. Or some of you may be pursuing music. Or French or German, whatever. So continue to do all this. This is the age of uh, doing many things. That summative and formative makes all the difference. The summative activity is the final, whereas the formative is testing how the knowledge is getting formed in the mind in the mind of the student. So when you look at the program as a whole. You, you imagine a rope. I don't have a diagram with me. I, I couldn't put it here. A rope. It is made of uh, various strands. Strand. Like a rope. It will have a helically wound uh, elements. Then if you still remove it, you have a small filament. So each filament becomes a strand. The strand can become rope. And several uh, rope, if you, I think there's an interchange of terminology, you can create cables. So if you look at the lift, or you, you look at a harnessing chain of a ship, you, you will find a very huge ropes, but they are all made of small, small filaments. Each filament adds to the value of the final rope. 
So you study about 45 courses, theory courses, and maybe another 19 laboratory courses. So each course will attribute or contribute to your uh, achievement of outcomes in terms of, I, I mentioned, higher studies or uh, some specific achievement in a bigger platform, in the national platform or a state platform or in campus, in various ways you like. Please understand the meaning of the subjects you study. Each subject will give you some outcome. And when you align your passion, you get a particular program outcome. Of course, you should have interest to have a lifelong learning, reading habits, improving the skills. That is how we progress in our human life. So I wish you all the best. I thank you for your time and wish you all a happy new year. Thank you.